Hello there and welcome back to another video. This is uh, Lucky Loop. So this is a game whereby you are looking to do tricks and are trying to pull off the best stunt and therefore get the most points to win the game. Lots of people think it is uh, Roll For It with a theme, which is a game you may be familiar with. Uh, it's a video I've already made, so check that one out too. If you go to the um, Max Games page, you'll see that. Now, this is interesting here. It was um, made and released in 2003, and Essen is pretty much the date that they're relating it to. So that's an interesting uh, thing, like an Easter egg, you might say. So the game comes with a dice cup, um, which is actually a lot better than I thought it would be. I didn't think I'd need to use that, but it's good. It comes with, for some reason, these two plastic cards, which I think just separate out the two sections. I don't know, that's how I've kind of decided to use them. So I can chuck those back in the box. And if you've ever been to Thailand, you'll know that the taxis are either yellow and green or blue and uh, red. I don't know if that's any reason why uh, they were there. In fact, I was in Thailand exactly one year later to the day when I was there, which is a strange thing. So uh, what you're looking to do is do routines. So you give out three of these to each player. Oops, let's do a three of each. So three of the blue and red types, three of the yellow and green. You then look at them. And what we're looking to do is trying to do a routine. I'll come on to how these go together, but as an example, um, you can see at a lower value, it's coming in from a distance, it's then getting to you and it's starting to roll. So there are more than just those three, but as an example. So I've got these things. Now what I need to do is say I'm the start player, and I'll show you what the start to player token looks like in a second. You're going to be going around here and trying to complete the diving dove, the mighty eagle, the rubber duck, and the red rooster. Once you've been a scoring marker uh, placed on all of these four, you then do your final routine. We need to get a total of 28 sorry, 25 or more, and then if you're successful, then the game will end and uh, end, that, end, that, end that round. And if you're the most points, you win. So I need to try and get, say, a yellow, a red, and a blue. So let's just move this up here, and uh, I'll do it there. So we have uh, a yellow here. We have uh, a red, and we have a blue. I happened to win the last one by one point, which is quite funny. So what you do is you've got dice in here, so you chuck those all out, and you're rolling three black dice. So chuck them here, and now you try and place them and try and complete stuff as you wish. So I can't do anything specific on here, which is terrible. Um, I've been so good with my dice before, um, but I can overshoot if I want to. So I'll do that, which you'll see it'll trigger there in a second. So if, if you go beyond what you need to hit, so you don't hit exactly, you'll get the lower score. If you get below it, you'll get nothing. So maybe I chose some bad cards, maybe I had some bad to draw. The other thing we do actually is, um, so you, turn, you can draw three cards and replace something, but instead you can place cards out. So I'm choosing two, rolling three again, I'm sorry. This time, I use your dice tray. Can I complete any of those tricks? I cannot. So those go away. Now I've got two left over, some leftover dice. You can only use maximum of three. Your leftover one to try and do another trick. This is better. So now I've completed that one. So what's my score? I get seven plus one. I get eight points. So now you take your little counter and let's try to do one at least like the board. Uh, well, white should be quite effective. So it goes there. Now you transfer your score onto here with your big marker. So each player, it's a two to five player game, gets a different mark counter, that then transfers across. Now for completing two tricks, you get a token, one of these things, which means in future, on your next turn when you're playing, you can re-roll this. If you re-roll it, uh, it lets you take three that you're doing for one particular round and then re-roll them again. Or you could use it like this, which gives you a red die again for that round. So uh, if you happen to cross 12, so the first person to reach 12 or more, they can get a counter that way instead. So maybe you complete still three. Uh, you can only ever get one of these by doing one of these triggering of bonuses. So there are a few different ways of getting uh, this bonus token. But as you can see, I'm now on that track. I've completed one of my four things. You then draw back up to six cards as you wish. So this time I'm looking at my cards and thinking, oh, I've got yellow and blue, which is fine here, but I need green. 
So I need to try and get a green card. One, two, there we go, three. So now I can try and do that one. The thing is, I don't necessarily want the trick to be too difficult. I'm trying to just do it. I don't need to get too many points potentially. In which case you can then hold back on a card such as this. Because remember, you need a minimum of three cards to try and do a, a total routine of 25. So imagine I did this one, that one and that one. Then I'm still holding on to, yeah, 10, 8 and 9, which is more than 25. But remember, you're still trying to get some good points. So then I'm trying to now do that for my final routine. That's it. I'm stuck with having to do that routine. It's going to cost me one point if I want to keep changing it. I also lose two points if I don't complete the trick. So when I do that for my final routine, so again, once these are all done, uh, I've also got to pick a counter. So there's a one matching my color. This is, by the way, the first player token uh, because it's quite fun. And it's a decent size in the sense that it doesn't need to be absolutely massive. So that's quite a fun little uh, birdie thing. And uh, you take one of these and you chuck it on one of these cards, the one that I think I might so it's just going to play three cards. I just try and chuck it on one of them and hope to do it. If I do it, I must do it. Uh, the game doesn't end if I can't complete all three tricks and do that one exactly. Again, I can still get some points out of it by doing all three, but I get 10 points. It doubles the score. After your first attempt trying to complete it on that round, that goes away. So you can still do it, uh, it's just that you would have had some bonus points by almost pushing your luck even further to hoping to get a specific trick done. And of course, the higher it is, the more difficult, but the more points you're going to get. So that is Lucky Loop. Uh, there are obviously different things you can see to do. You have a roll, a turn, a loop and a dive. And uh, yeah, that is that. It's uh, again, not a huge box, thankfully again as well. Slightly bigger than Bonnie and Clyde, if you've seen that review that's coming up. But uh, yeah, the cards are nice, um, classic, you know, decent size, and uh, it's effective at uh, just having a game for about 40 minutes, it seems to take. It's a lot swifter than I thought it would be. Uh, as a two player or a three, it's, you know, you do quickly play your dice down, and then it's next player's turn. There are tons of these uh, chips, which, you know, you probably only have two or three in the game, to be honest. Um, per person, but the, it rewards you by if you don't do a trick, you do get a bonus chip. So you could be using potentially more than one in a turn. You can use them in that final routine as well. Because of course, whilst you're just stuck on that routine, other people might have failed trying to do something else. You can redo one of your tricks again and improve. Um, and if you do get better than the other one, then you'll get a better score. But the downside is someone's trying to do that final trick they're definitely going to get potentially a good score, especially with that bonus. But um, yeah, you can't, I don't think you can actually win unless it's the round in which you do that final tr uh, trick as well. So um, yeah, it's an uh, interesting small little game that I thought I'd check out. And better than I thought it would be. I'd heard some negative reviews. It's uh, light enough, but still, um, there's definitely a market now for people playing Game push answers, heavy answers long, and it still, you know, scratches that itch for people who, you know, want to play something with just a quite a bit of fun. I find roll for it, as I said, a bit too. I've seen better examples of games like it, to be honest. And uh, yep, there are a few little kind of different mechanics that it relates to, but for me, this is the kind of game that uh, pairs it a bit with a bit of a theme, and it just. I don't know, ties it to get together it more rather than just trying to get 40 points as you do in Roll For It. So that was Lucky Loop. I haven't been fully focusing on the um, uh, obviously on camera center position, but uh, yeah, uh, Wolfgang Penning, Panning, I haven't heard of him before, but it's uh, not a bad thing. Queen Games, I don't own as many as I thought I would have Queen Games, but I'll quickly. Uh, do the do the weighing okay so for lucky loop let's bring it closer into shots we are just checking the zero we're looking at a weight of 662 grams and unfortunately there we go it's now coming into focus so there we go it's a uh, you know interesting size box not too big but that is lucky loop and i know specifically if you like planes 
Uh, this one might fly for you. Thank you.